Hey everybody, welcome. This is Doc Williams with Build With Me and tonight we're gonna to be talking about the book, what is it called? Never Lose a Customer Again. And this is teaching you turn any sale into lifelong loyalty. Well, basically you can turn lifelong fans you can get that within 100 days, okay? So that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. Again, we welcome you to the program. This is gonna be awesome tonight. And uh, this is Sunday, so you're gonna see me doing prep for work, ask me questions about how we're gonna be doing this program, all that stuff, so come with me. All right, everyone, let's do this. Welcome again. My name is Doc Williams, and this is Build With Me. And for this program, the whole purpose of this show is I build three businesses with one tool every single show. So come in, ask me questions, and uh, we have a good time, and we just we build things live. So if you're working on your business tonight, it is Sunday. What in the world? What day is it? It's almost July. I don't know what day it is the 28th it's the 28th of june my goodness so we're going to be talking about what we're doing with uh our business and we're going to be actually talking about what this book is about and all of those things so we're going to be talking about the overview of what this book is um how this has transformed our business and then we're going to be looking at how constantly we're looking to update our business using this model and then housekeeping what we're doing with uh build with me and the and the agency and all that kind of stuff so you get a behind the scenes look and all of that kind of good stuff let's make sure everything's good our destinations are on point right now where are we live okay so if you're watching on mixer if you're watching it on twitch all of those good things Thank you so much, YouTube. And then we're on Facebook. Good. And so you can ask me things in the chat, all that kind of good stuff. So let's get right into it. So what we're going to do is talk about the overview of uh, what this book is. And if you want to get a copy, I do not have an affiliate link on this, but um, you can go to Amazon and uh, you can either get it on Audible, Amazon, doesn't really matter. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Joey Coleman. Take a look at this. By the way, is my sound okay? One, cool. All right, we're good. Okay, so the book is called, again, Never Lose a Customer Again, Turn Any Sale into a Lifelong Loyalty in 100 Days. So this is a really interesting book. It's been around for a couple years. Uh, it was recommended from a friend of mine and uh, actually a former business partner as well in another business. So um, really, really good. It's a really good book. So we're going to be breaking down how you can start making more sales, how you can start building your loyalty program. Now, if you haven't already, um, Chris Shelsey from AppSumo actually interviewed the author of the book. Great, great uh, thing. It, uh, create great customer experience. It's part of the Remote Academy from AppSumo. Really great stuff. So watch that. I've got the link right there if you want that one. But also I have uh, two talks right here from Joey and uh, and some highlights. So the whole purpose is building a, uh, a, a referral program for them to be able to trust your business and then be able for them to be avid fans. So it, got, it goes through um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different phases of what's going on in business and how you can start dominating in that, in those different ways. And for people to um, trust your business and for you to get more referral business and really the best, uh, the best stuff that you have. Oh man. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Thank you so much. Um, and, and how is the future by the way? We got some, we got some guest stars right now. How is the future on Monday, by the way? Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Terrible with names. Just making sure. 
This is Daniel, isn't it? I think this is Daniel. But hopefully you're having a good day. All of that kind of good stuff. So thank you so much for, for coming in. Yep. Okay. So, so it seems like it's the future is very similar to what's going on right now. So, so I'm glad that you're still making it though. And I'm glad that the future is still there so I can make sure that uh, Monday looks okay. So the, <laughs> yeah, not yet. Time travelers haven't done their magic yet. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about, again, uh, creating customers that love you, how you can start having advocates and all those things. So we're going to break down and, and the, what's really great about this, what we're going to be talking about today is it doesn't matter if you have a business that you're trying to scale or you're trying to do a side hustle. If you're even doing a side hustle or you're just testing something, it's still really important to have a really good user experience and to make sure that you're onboarding your clients, even if it's a, a project that's not done, understanding what they find valuable for them to trust you, for them to like the and love the content and then go from there. So we're going to go through the eight stages and then we're actually, I'm walking you through actually how we do it with our business. So you see that I'm not just talking about it. We're trying to implement all these things and not only do we implement it, but we rate ourselves to see how we can get better at it. So we'll go through the phases as an overview and then we're going to get into how we're doing this. So the eight phases, let me just read the eight phases. So um, well, I'll just go through them. Okay. So number one, phase one is the assess stage. Stage two is admit. Stage three is affirm. Stage four is activate. Five, acclimate. Six, accomplish. Seven, adopt. Eight, advocate. So as we go through this, this is how you're going to be able to get your all of your customers to trust you more and for you to get to the next level with whatever product or service or whatever you're trying to do in business. So we're going to go through each stage. I'm going to show you what we're doing and then how we're constantly trying to uh, make this better. And also in the chat, let me know what you're working on. Let me know on a project, what you're working on. And if you've heard of these eight phases, if you've ever heard of this book and, um, yeah. And if you need help with any of these things, so let's get through it. And I'm, I'm going to be working on this as well. So phase one is the assess phase. It's the customer deciding if they want to do business with you. So the first thing is how we, how do you do this? How can you have a, your potential clients or, uh, potential customers know that they, um, want to do business with you? I can't believe I missed this so early or late in the show. By the way, this show is always unofficially brought to you by Red Bull. If anyone has a connection to any Red Bull representative or you know someone that can get me a Red Bull sponsor, make sure that you message me, email me, DM me, message me on the show because I am looking for that Red Bull sponsor. Um, that is all. Shameless plug. All right, so let's get right into it. So we talked about the assess fade, right? So the customer is deciding if they want to do business with you. How can you do that? Well, for a lot of times, it's your landing page. It's your um, page where they can get more information about you, right? So let's go with a famous example, and then we'll talk about ourselves. And I want to hear from you. What are you doing? So the first thing is like apple.com, right? So if you look at Apple, you know what's going on. They're trying to, uh, I'm making an assessment. Now, what am I seeing right here? The assessment is number one, is this the right type of, am I in the right place? Do I want this kind of products? They're making sure that you understand that it is brand loyalty. Everything about their stuff, it's all branded. It's all Apple. You know this, right? It is very different than if you go to like, um, let's go to what, what, what's, let's go to Dell or maybe Ivy. Ah, I'm glad that you asked that. What will Red Bull get out of the relationship? I'm so glad that you asked that. So my pitch for Red Bull, and I've been trying to call them, but anyway, I was going to go to a show uh, when, you know, a convention and everything, but let's go through that. So the reason why Red Bull should actually sponsor this show is if you look at what's going on, 
they go into esports, they go through all different types, um, extreme sports. But what's going on right now? It's the innovation, it's the advancement of technology. Kids, everyone are going online, they're making businesses, e-commerce is huge, everything about going online is key. And this is, if not the only show that is pushing the boundaries to help people at this rate to get ahead for people to really, really understand their business and devoted to helping people to get to the next level and showing them how to do it step by step. If Red Bull is always talking about pushing the narrative, pushing people, pushing society, they need to sponsor this show and they need to sponsor it because every single thing that we're trying to do is making sure that we're helping people get to the next level, reach for the stars, reach for that next thing, just like they do with athletes in you know, all their sports, ones that are pushing the boundaries. We're doing the same thing in tech and with business. Show me any other show that is willing to go in depth live to show people how to granular go and fix their business and then systemically change it and actually show a roadmap of how they're gonna be doing that. We've been helping businesses start and get their first thousand dollars and we're helping businesses even get to eight figures with some of our clients that's my pitch that's what i'm going for what was i doing uh, let's see canva does a great job with it if google canvas easy canva transfer canvas template that have a thousand landing pages they speak the same search term per linked and the dude's name for mail in area is chase what? Um, what are we talking about? Tell me a little bit of per link. This dude's name for Maryland is Chase. What am I reading? What about Canva? You're saying there's. Oh, you're saying Canva.com does a great job. Man, you're on it. Bro, thank you. I got to talk to Chase. Where did you find that information? You just look it up on LinkedIn. Now, what is this Canva.com, first of all? Canva.com. Um, Canva.com does a great job with this. Canva.com does a great job with the assess phase. I think that's what you, you're talking about. Good times, man. I do need to set my link, LinkedIn game up. I need to talk to him. He's probably only like 40 minutes away from me. Uh, let's take a look at canva.com. We're talking about the assess phase. So we just went to apple.com. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, I went to Dell, but let's go to Canva. Let me, let me sign out real quick. I remember the old Canva um, homepage, but it's been a minute. Aren't you out in Australia too? So uh, wasn't Canva one of the biggest investments for Australia VCs? I think. Yeah. And I think, uh, what is it? It's another company that I love. Anyway, um, okay, so canva.com, is this the homepage? I think, is this, they used to have a page where you used to move the mouse around and it used to change colors. Crazy. Canva's killing it, I love it. Very interesting. So before, I remember when it used to be on the page where it used to swirl and it used to change colors. But I'm totally fine with this. Kind of reminds me how simple Facebook is, but I like how appealing this is. And again, it's telling me exactly what, what I need to happen. Go, but go Google Canva Halloween. Hold on one second. Let's take a look at this. saying just google search it or you're just saying look at the templates let's take a look at this it 
Is this hmm? Is this the one you're talking about? Pretty interesting. Interesting. That's a good point. Um, and what's up? What's up, Erica? Um, okay, so that's a good question. So the question is to, do I like Canva better than Vizme? Um, absolutely. Absolutely. I use Vizme if you would Google. I already Googled it, though. Wait, hold on. Look at this. I'll just Google this. After I'm on Google, tell me what you're thinking about. You're saying after Googling that, the images, what, what you got? Google this. Halloween Facebook post. All right. Let's see about this. Stop messing. If You know what? If I start getting ads about this, I'm going to be so mad about this. I don't like getting retargeted. I should have put it back. Okay. So I just Googled it. What you got? So when I'm getting the answer for this one, then click the first ad. I don't have an ad on this. Let's do this. This better be worth it. This better be worth it. I don't have an ad on it. You know, too, if it's regional, if you're in Australia. No, nah, I don't have it. No, nah, I, I have ads on mine. I just don't have it right now. Could be regional, too. Because, look, I got ads right here. Um, so the question with Erica is why, why do I like Visme or what do I use over Canva? If I'm making presentations or I'm doing anything, oh yeah, definitely different countries, everything like that, different results. Yeah. I'll probably be targeted different too. So Visme right here, the reason I like Visme, very different than Canva. But the reason I like this one is if I'm making, um, specific workflows, if I'm making all of this stuff, I'm going to use Visme instead. Um, not only that, they're already making everything that I need and I can just edit it a lot more detailed, everything like that. If I'm doing anything from scratch, social presentations or anything like that, I'm going to use Canva. But if I need infographics, if I need to do workflows, hands down, I'm going to use Visme. Shout out to another DMV company, Rockville, Maryland. They're great. Um, and they're wonderful and they've just been growing like crazy, really cool stuff. Um, so, and I've actually liked how they changed their homepage as well. Really cool stuff. Let's see what we got here. So let's see what you got here. Let me switch over. Designing, engaging. Ooh, I like that. Designing engaging Facebook graphics. Try free for 30 days. So that's the ad. Makes sense. Featured Facebook post. I'm going to use it as a reference. Thank you so much. And I'm going to screenshot this. Thank you so much, sir. So the assess phase, right? Really good. That's really good stuff. Note that the content directly relates to the search criteria. Yeah, definitely. So this goes to even um, the other point that I was going to make. If you're going to be talking about a very specific subject, this seems so basic, but actually uh, Amy Hepton from Paid Search Magic, she is one of the top um, Google ad experts out there, especially on state side. She was talking about if you look at how many people actually do ads, how many people trip on the very first thing they're supposed to do, the correlating of the copy that matches the ad or what the user intent is and what's on the, on the first page. So again, I agree with you wholeheartedly that it's really hard to have that, uh, be done correctly. I'm going to use that as an example. Shout out, shout out, man. Thanks so much for that. Coming out here with the great clips out here. Let me just drop that into the notes for the episode. I'm going to put that as an example. Let me add an image, but yeah, you have a really clear indication of what the page is going to be about and everything like that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Let me just add that to the page. 
Okay, so the S phase. Um, let me put that here. Way too much stuff. There we go. Okay, let's add that. So the assess phase, again, the customer is deciding if they want to do business with you. Really good example. Thank you so much for adding that. So right here, you've got to have something that aligns with what your user is trying to do. So for us, how do we do this? Well, if you look at it, originally, we were trying to be all over the place and trying to help everyone in business. But with Build With Me and, and the new homepage of Bill, uh, with uh, Brand Factor Inc., we're very specific on something. We're trying to see how fast we can make you money and help you create a business quickly. Okay, so right here, our main, we've seen by testing different lines, let's see how fast we can make you money. That's one of the highest like engagement phrases that we have for our business and what we do. And so that's why we put it right there in the front. Also, too, on brandfactorinc.com, we have a single focus when we're getting people on the homepage. We're teaching people how to scale their business using live streaming. So we have a master class on that. And because we've changed that, our conversion rates have drastically improved. So our conversion, our conversion rates when we were first starting with the assess phase were less than 1.5%. It jumped up to 10% just by having a clear focus on the assess phase. And we're still trying to get better at it. But again, a jump from 1.5 to 10%, we'll take it. So for the build with me phase, we're saying, how do we do it? We do it with the build with me uh, page, but specifically the, the weekly live shows, because we get to do things like this. You're seeing that we really care. We're always constantly experimenting, trying to get better at our craft, trying to get better with our clients. So Again, for our assess phase, we're using the live show as that point. Um, the next point that we have is the admit phase. So the admit phase it begins when the customer admits that they have a problem or, need, or a need and believe you, the company or organization, can solve it. So how can you work on the admit phase? It says, at this point, the customer is feeling joy, euphoria, and excitement that the search is over. If you fail to acknowledge this, you miss the chance to strongly associate the emotional high with the product or service. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we do that admit phase? Okay, for us personally, we have um, two different phase. We have two different quizzes. Now, the reason we have the quizzes and the master class, we're moving these sections. The reason they're in that admit phase is because after they take the uh, quiz, they now see how much that they're lacking in their business and they know that we're giving them an answer. Okay, so an example of this, let's drop down. Get the tech stack you need. Build your side hustle. They get to take the quiz for free and it gives them a clear conclusion. We're not selling them anything, but now they have a clear path of knowing that this is a good move for them and it goes from there. Now, acknowledging how do we do that Let me drop down. If you look at it, we have the automations right here. We have a welcome video that automatically when they're, um, when they get an answer or they get a conclusion that they just uh, took the quiz, they'll get a personalized email that says, congratulations, thanks so much. And then you go from there. We're gonna be changing that a little bit too. We're gonna be adding a few things, but for right now we have the auto um, the auto emails that will say congratulations and all those things and have a custom video that will say, hey, welcome. You did a great job. Now let's welcome you into the free community and uh, let's get started. Excuse me. Excuse me. So um, those are the ways that we admit. So hold on one second. I'm switching this over here because I put it in the wrong section. Let's see, bring that down. Drop it to quizzes. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, I told you I was going to rate ourselves on every single time. So the assessment phase, how do we know we're doing a good job or what are we doing? We're using uh, Restream to, to broadcast on multiple systems and we're making sure that we have automations right there. Um, 
And that's pretty much it for right now. Uh, we don't have anything until they get into that mint phase where we have um, a CRM set up and all of those things. So let me drop this down over here. We have ConvertKit, Outgrow, and uh, yeah, I have ConvertKit twice. Oh, and Podia. So if anyone has seen Outgrow before or do not know what that is, this is probably the biggest, um, the best platform that we've we've used to collect leads um, because we use this for calculators, uh, assessments, everything. I love this thing. Yo, Outgrow. Shout out to AppSumo back in the day that used to have this. This is probably the most used tool for our lead generation. Um, BuzzFeed used to use them back in the day. Another thing that I use if uh, Outgrow is too expensive or you need to have more details, I use paperform.co. Now, the reason I use paperform.co, I mean, you can do anything with paperform. I've used it to create apps. Uh, to connect tons of different systems, but you can use webhooks, integrations. They have native integrations with Google Sheets. I love Paperform. They can also do conditional answers. The only thing is I like the interface for the quizzes better for Outgrow. Outgrow is just more expensive, so just keep that in mind. Okay, let's see through that. Okay. Okay, so we went through the assess phase. Assess phase, rating the quiz. And now I'm gonna rate our, I'm not just gonna rate our show, eight out of 10. Rating live show and intro quizzes. I'm gonna do eight out of 10. How to improve, okay, follow up based on results. Yeah, so we can do segmentation, further segmentation. Let me just do that. Further segmentation. Okay, let's knock that out. Okay, so admit phase, we already talked about it. Also too, if anyone uses Dub, it, maybe you bought Dub, but you haven't used it yet. Dub has been killing it for us. Um, it's really, really been crucial using it in our follow-up emails and our conversion rates have gone up a lot higher just using Dub. Um, so we integrated it with um, Book Like a Boss, a couple other things right here. And uh, we just have the onboarding video right here. Really good stuff. And then, yeah, I just love this thing so much. So how do we do it? Quizzes, master, class, and then we have admittance into the Build It community. <laughs> no, um, not Dove. Although it'd be interesting to see what I could do with Dove in marketing, but dub, D-U-B-B, D-U-B-B dot com, dub. <laughs> uh, but if anyone's using, you know, dub for their admit phase, more power to you. Okay, so we have the welcome series. We did the, the new welcome page for the Build It community too. And to answering questions, we added a chat feature uh, for people to talk to ones before they actually join the community did the mock-up of the community, prices, what they're gonna be getting. We did a 14-day free trial with it. So we redid the whole Build It uh, paid premium community. So, uh, and then we did a new video for it. Okay, so the next part is phase three, affirm. The affirm phase is more commonly known as buyer's remorse. Okay, so how did we work on getting away from buyer's remorse? Okay, so right when um, someone signs up for the Build It community or any of our courses, we have a welcome email, and then also we have another dub video that welcomes them and, and says, thank you so much for being here. And then we ask them to let us know what they're struggling with. Although we do that in our opening email, even if they're not a paid member, that helps them to get engagement right away. And then they feel like they're up, they're, they're ready to start working. And so, what I would say is really any follow-up emails or sequences, what you're doing. Now, by the way, if people are saying, wait, wait a minute, follow-up sequences don't work, um, you know, they, people aren't gonna like them, I'm gonna show you our new welcome series and how crazy it's been. 
Okay. And I can't take any credit. You, if people have been hearing about it, um, I took the template email sequence from SendFox and then I put it in my, um, in my ConvertKit account. Now, all you people, you know why, if anyone cares about me to go on a rant tonight, but most of you watching know why I don't use SendFox full time. You know I love that company, but they, they've got some work to do. So um, I'm taking most of their templates and I'm putting it into ConvertKit. And, oh, sorry. I'm in multiple accounts. Hold on, let me get over here. Um, and the reason is I can't do that advanced segmentation in SendFox. I have to do it in ConvertKit. So that's, that's the issue. Let me jump back in. Okay. So we're going to be talking about, um, that the affirm phase, uh, just look at follow-ups. What are you doing now? Again, Erica, if you're watching this too, if you're thinking about starting out with your different clients and everything, um, or for the mastermind, think about the onboarding sequence that you're going to need them to do. Okay. Hold on. Update. Okay. Let's get in. Let's go through the automation sequence. And shout out to all of you that are watching it on Mixer, by the way, making us the number one business show, nightly business show on Mixer before they shut down. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for, for helping us do that. It's been a ride, guys, but um, shout out to Mixer. We're, we'll, <laughs> we're leaving at the end of the month. We're not leaving. Everyone else is leaving. I mean, they're shutting it down. So, But um, thanks, everyone, for supporting us on that channel. Come over to YouTube. Come over to YouTube. Uh, search for Doc Williams. You'll find me. I'm fine. The show. Okay, so let's take a look at the opening sequence. Garima, what's going on? What's going on? We got some Periscope people going on here. Okay, so if you look at this real quick, this is no joke. I mean, these are real numbers. You know, I'm not making this stuff up. So we got, we got the. This is an opening sequence. We have a seventy. 4% open rate, 7.5 click rate, the first email, 58 and 23, 35 and 10. I can't ask more than that. Can't ask more than that. That's all just having them have an onboarding sequence. Took it from SendFox. I'm not going to pretend like I made it up, but uh, they have some really good opening sequences and uh, it's been paying dividends. Um, Karima, what you doing? How you been? I know I'm back. I think I'm going to be live streaming almost every day for a minute. Okay. So the affirm section for Erica. Um, I have no idea where to start onboarding. Think about how can you get them engaged as fast as you can? I would probably ask them to just, what are you struggling with and hit a reply and tell them to hit reply and then make a custom video every single time you get a response. Now, I would, th now you might say like, that's not scalable. And for the most part, when you get to a certain level, yes. But right now we're getting, we're getting 20% of people that are, and this is small sample size. So we had just this new initiative for build with me, this new sequence. How many do we have roll in 136? We have more than 20, 22% uh, hitting, replying and talking to us. Then from there, we're converting them into a membership, maybe like 12%, something like that. Had to look at the new numbers, but it's pretty high. And not only that, we've got tons of people going to be on the trial for the membership as well, just by simply hitting reply and talking to them. So something to keep in mind. Okay. So we've got the affirm phase. Um, oh, the way we're doing it, affirm, we're using uh, Podia, Dub, and I'll actually say and convert kit. Okay, add automation all services, uh, including brand audits. So before we didn't do an a um, 
automation or for the firm phase. Tell you the truth though, we're not doing brand audits like this anymore because they only get the brand audit if they go into the membership. So we actually, we actually, we streamlined everything. So we cut out one less uh, product or service and we rolled it into our community to incentivize them to go into the community, which is working. Okay. Phase four, the activate phase, begins with the first major post-sale interaction when the relationship between the customer and organization first materializes in a meaningful way and the business begins to deliver on the promises made during the assess phase. So this is reaching the first goal, okay? So how can you celebrate the very first goal in your product or service? Now, think about this. If you're shipping a product, perhaps you can, even giving them a tracking code and saying, hey, yay, like you're, you're, your product shipped like that's still the activate phase and helping with that they might not have the product in hand but you're going there the same thing you can do this with consulting if you have a page where they're booking they get a confirmation email you know great thanks so much and if you're adding that guess what add a video add a template video you don't have to have this mug on on your page but you can have yourself and just say like Congratulations, can't wait to talk to you. Make sure that you block off time for our conversation. Get a pen and paper. I can't wait. Now, there's something to keep in mind in this book, which I really like. There are the six ways to communicate each phase. Joey in the book talks about trying to make sure that you do one of these six. Number one, communicate them with them in person if you can. Right now, it's kind of tough. Email, phone, uh, mail, video, presence, just giving them presence. And uh, that's actually what we're doing with our clients coming up uh, with what we're going to be doing when they get to certain milestones. We're going to be mailing them things. So it, it, it's something to consider. And he was like, listen, you don't have to do the same type of communication every phase, but think about it. Erica was saying, okay, I've asked what they look for in the mastermind and some replied with questions they would like to answer the group. I can make videos on those. Awesome. Yes, the questions that they um, have, make a video and like maybe even a teaser and be like, thanks so much, this is what we're gonna be discussing in the group, bam, get them right there. Um, videos have been really successful. I'll show you that I didn't think videos were that successful until I saw I was in another group and someone brought up Build With Me and they brought up that I answered their, their question with video and that got some of the biggest reactions in the group. And that, I mean, I just respond back to everything with videos and that helps so much. Yeah, I love mail from people I buy from. Yes, I love sending even something. Yeah, it can be a card. It can be something that's handmade. When you're sending something in the mail, like people go crazy for that. So think about how you can be doing that. Uh, we have, we're going to create a new leaderboard and bounty system. So for our live streaming course, after you do certain challenges, we're going to be se sending um, uh, gifts in the mail. So we're going to be doing that. Also too, for the group that I'm in um, right here, if you see it, uh, you actually get pins based on what's going on. And it's like selling, it's the 10K club where I actually get a pin. If I sell $10,000 worth of courses, 100,000. If I go evergreen, if you look at that, I get an evergreen little thing right here. Uh, I care only about the pins. Like I'm in the group and I'm trying to make money, but I only care about, I wanna have the most pins in the entire group. That's what motivates me. I joined the mastermind just to get pins. Oh, awesome. Erica, I'm glad that you're loving the, the video responses. Yes, stickers, everything like that. They do not cost a lot. Go to sticker, mule, or something like that. Uh, you'll be, you can kill it with that. Okay, so activate. Okay, so you have that reaching the first goal. Also too, Erica, um, this is great. So when you first came into the group, right? So you got a welcome uh, video, and I believe you got an email that said like, hey, here's how to log in and here's the first steps that you need to take. And I think you got a form that said, like take this brand audit too. So we put our members right to work to get started, to focus on they wanna get goals fast, get them to move fast. Thank you so much, Diana. Yes, I am trying to get every pin possible. Man, what made you really decide to join the, yeah. 
I need pins. Um, and when, you know, I never really understood the whole thing with like Russell Brunson giving out like the two comma club in like the, the plaque and everything. I was like, man, that's stupid. But then I was at this mastermind. They're like, here's these pins. I was like, shoo, I need to get some pins out here. Um, okay. So activate, think about how you can make it special for your audience as well. Um, so what are we doing? So we're going to be actually adding badges to our community. Uh, shout out Nyota, uh, Erica, um, Sean, Mark, Eric, you know who you guys are. Who else? We Brent, you all know. You're going to be getting some pins. Well, it depends on what you do. But anyway, you see what I'm um, Okay. Yeah, I know. And so the, you see the Christmas tree? It's for the evergreen, right? So you go evergreen and you get the, the, the pine that, what is that? An ever, whatever. What kind of tree that is? You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Phase five, acclimate. Make the client feel comfortable. For example, think about acclimate, acclimating to a new city at a high altitude. Experience, uh, experience found in the book. Okay, so he was talking about when, because he lived in um, Denver where he had house guests, he would give them water when they first came to the house. And no matter what, even if they said they felt good, they would make sure um, that you would... Um, you would get that water to acclimate. So if you don't properly onboard the customer and get them bought into your approach, they will never become a, a long standing loyal customer. If you do not hold their hand along the way, you can ensure the smooth transition. As they embrace your approach, you can acclimate customers to your way of doing business. So think about how you can acclimate. Now they gave two different examples, one being Domino's and one being uh, San Francisco, San Francisco CrossFit. Domino's, um, they're allowing you to know, okay, well, we're going to be there in 20 minutes and you can see where the driver is. Or remember that whole Domino's uh, like campaign where it would be those special kind of uh, cars that like had the pizza that like was somehow they, it was a pizza car. I don't even know. Like, I never saw it, but like the commercials and that whole gimmick thing, right? So they're trying to make sure that you acclimate, you're feeling trusted that they're going to actually deliver what they promise. How can you make sure that they feel uh, safe? For us, we can do better. We're working on more videos and articles in the community. Uh, if you looked at it for you community members, uh, we just came out with another, another course called Clarity. And I think it's one of our best work. And Clarity goes, let me just show you. Let me show you behind the scenes a little bit. Hold on a second. This will, we're, we're using this because we want our uh, community members to have a little bit more information or guidance, no matter what tier system they are in, uh, in the community. So this, this, I think this is my favorite course that we've ever constructed. I'm really super, super excited about this because it's always been different things that we've talked about in the past, but now it's all under one roof. So give me one second. I'm pulling this up now. I've got way too many tabs. Let me get my life together. Hold on, everybody. All right, hold on a second. Grab this. I've got like 23 tabs open right now. Hold on a second. I need to get my life together. Okay. Got this. One second. Give me 20 seconds. And also too, with our community, we're going to be doing like, I'm already batching all of the announcements. So at least once a week, we're going to be, you, everyone knows what the theme is going to be. And I'm already going to record a video and then, have it drop on Wednesday, no matter what. So even with the live one of the live show, every community member will have an exclusive video in the community as well. So um, just keeping that in mind. Let's see. Okay, let me do clarity. Okay, let's pull this one over here. And let me do course view and bring it over. 
course page. Okay. I have way too many. Okay. I know you do need to join Karima. Okay. So this is the new clarity, um, course, and this is designing your next signature product or service. So number one, we have a whole clarity resource, um, resource guide. So designing your next signature product or service. So now we have an exact flow chart that you can walk through if before you launch your products and service, what you need to do and how you can prove it and adding your own notes as you go through this whole process. So it's a step-by-step -step guide that if you cannot solve one thing, you cannot advance. It's all of the things you need to do before you have liftoff of your product or service. So we have that right there. We have the planning stages where you're going to be going through the planning, starting doing the work and writing in what's happening with your, uh, with your number one, if you already have a product or service, or if you're trying to launch it, we have that. We have another section where you're creating your media kit. Um, let me designing your media kit. Love this section right here, breaking down how you're going to be doing this, how you're going to be pitching your product and service. And then on top of that, we have write your best review. I love this section so much because this is, if you're in the app store, if you're doing something, um, yeah, Karima, why aren't you over with everyone on, uh, on YouTube? Look, Erica, no, Nyota's talking about it right now. Why are you watching it on Periscope? Jump in on the, on the YouTube channel. Um, right here, this allows you to write your best review, writing in what you would want your ideal customer to say about your product or service and how do you want them to position it? What are they saying? Now, this is for you to think about as you're crafting it to get the get them to get to this point. But also, if they don't say these things, you can have a before and after. This is ideally what you want people to do, but are they actually coming to that conclusion on their own? Now, I'm not saying coach them into giving the review you want, but what I'm saying is as you're going through this section, think about in your mind, what do you want people to do with your product and service? How do you want people to position it? What do you want people to say about it? And then give them the chance to really think about this as well. I really like that idea. Um, and then also too, we have talking about reviewing your minimal viable build. So not MVPs. We're talking about, this is the build it community. This is build with me. I was like, we need to have our own term. It's going to call MVBs. Uh, <laughs> Nyota, get her, get her, Nyota. Um, <laughs> uh, so this is reviewing your minimal viable build part one. What's going on? Uh, what went well? What wasn't going well? And right here too is, again, reaching your goals. What do you need to do next? What skills do you need? What's your obstacles? And this helps you to walk through all of the things you need to have your best signature product or service. And what I really love about this is like, you're, you're seeing it, we're showing people uh, a preview of it, but every single section I've already recorded uh, videos and uh, breaking down each form and thinking about all the things that you need to do to make this a success for your brand and Karima stop getting on Twitter so much. Okay. That's just too much. You've been on Twitter too much. Um, so that's just an example of the clarity one. Um, <laughs> and, uh, no, you're too much. Uh, so let me know what you think about the clarity, um, course, but that's, that's just giving you a taste of, we're, I'm always trying to make more courses for you in the build it community, because if you're successful, you're going to have, you're going to be able to impact the world more. So I'm, I, again, I'm building more and more courses to make sure that the onboarding is smooth. You're getting what you need, all of those different things. So, um, that's just an example of some of the things that we're working on. Uh, so this should be in your account. If, uh, if you don't have a, 
if you don't see it yet, it should be there by tomorrow. I think I'm going to be announcing it in the group. But um, and then on the build it page, if some of you and thank you so much, some of the founders that are here at Nyota, shout out. Uh, if you remember the first page, it was really, really basic. Now, based on the uh, based on the feedback, we added all of these other things. Yeah, no, that's going to be great. The power of reviews. Yeah. And then this is the new build it um, community page. And then we rebuilt it on based on what people were saying. We have now mock-ups of what it looks like, um, the different levels, all of those things. So, and then we have a video as well, better cover image and all those things. Um, the level of the courses, the clarity. So for level one, for the, um, for the tools level, it comes with two courses, two courses. It comes with chatbots 101, and then it comes with, um, the clarity course that you just saw Nyota and a few others that are on the founder series, you get grandfathered in. So you get pretty much all of the next like 10 courses. So, um, you get all of those. You'll, you have the go live course. You have everything Nyota and Mark, if you're here too, you get all of that stuff. But for the, for the basic one, for the tools, the 49 a month, you get all that. <laughs> no, Nyota, you already got, listen, you're good. Stop with the bake sales. Stop with the bake sales. You're already, you're already grandfathered in. You already got them. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're good. So as we go through that, um, yeah, so that's the acclimate phase. So again, our, our job is to um, have more courses. And then also too, if you look at it, we have the whole section right here. Um, we, we have a messenger section too. So that way, if people have questions that we, we make sure that we get in everyone. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really happy about this. Listen, my wife did all that. I'm not even going to take, take, she, she redid all of the images for everything. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this together, I'm trying to work on this. We'll be talking about repurpose in a moment too. So this is good stuff. So what we need to do is add more videos. So we're working on it, but I think we're at the acclimate. We're going to still work on a few things. Um, thank you. Thank you. We're trying, we're trying. So I'm working on it. So that we, we are still working on some new, new stuff, but just keep that in mind. The next one is the accomplished phase. So the accomplished phase is phase six. It says the accomplished phase of the customer experience occurs when the customer achieves the result they are seeking when they decided to do business with you in the first place. This may be the time they use the product or achieve the desired impact or the time when your service delivers on the hopes they had at the beginning of the relationship. Okay. So what we have at the end of each course is like a success video. Like you made it, you did it. And that's pretty much it. But what I, I want to add is we're going to be adding certificates and we're going to be adding, I, we're going to be trying to add in prizes just like to incentivize everyone to just, to just make it. So I'm always open to suggestions, but certificates we're definitely going to have for the build it community and everything like that. What level you graduated, if you did the completion of the chatbots, but also do a project with chatbots. So that way you have, you're building your portfolio too. So you're not, it's just not on paper. You, people are clearly seeing that, you know, your information, but more importantly, now that portfolio gets you more money because you've shown that you are proficient in all those things. So I'm trying to work on building a portfolio and a certificate program. Uh, that's, that's what we're working on. As far as prizes, I'm trying to see if we can get together with certain companies where they can get, if we can get discounts based on, um, you know, the course or something like that. So if you graduate a certain course, you automatically get, um, you get a discount if you go to a certain product or service. So I'm, I'm still working on that. And we're trying to, we're going to see if we can, we work on that. Maybe out AppSumo. I'm not sure if they're going to do it. So we've got that. 
Um, so again, our, our rating, it's six out of 10. I think we can do better. Um, roadmap for the build it community. I think we need to have prizes. And uh, again, we're gonna add certificates. So that's on the horizon for sure. I would like, yeah, I would like an exit portfolio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the exit portfolio that kind of like how we just showed you, where is it? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, creating a media kit. What I'm trying to do is create, where is this thing? Design your own media kit. What I'm trying to do is have like a three or five page like template, maybe that you can download in Canva and have the links. So that way you can edit it and copy it yourself and kind of plug and play a media kit or some kind of, you know, exit portfolio so you can keep keep moving on. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that you're staying here, Nyla. Um, and, and that way, again, we're trying to make it good for, for everyone in the community. So the question is, what would that portfolio look like? Oh man, discounts for missed app sumo deals. Listen, I ain't trying to get in trouble. I ain't trying to sign a deal like that. Listen, I'm going to have to delete that comment. I'm just joking. I can't delete that comment, but no, there, there are so many contracts for app sumo. It depends on the deal. Depends on which AppSumo deal. Some are in, you know, well, I don't, I can't comment on that. It just depends. Every business is a little bit different. So some pass AppSumo deals. If you look at like Hello Woofy, they're doing something crazy right now. If anyone knows what Hello Woofy is, uh, they're a pass AppSumo uh, company. They're really trying to raise money right now. I It scares me because I'm not sure if they're going to go out of business. I really like them. Their UI UX sucks, but um, they're, they're, they're one of my favorite platforms. I think you can invest in their company. They're doing like almost like a Kickstarter. Kind of scares me. That shows me like it didn't go well or they still need a bunch of money. Um, so sometimes I can offer you discounts on certain products because depending on what they're doing after AppSumo, sometimes I cannot. I'm sorry. I'm never going to have those conversations, but own a piece of Hello Woofy, minimum investment, a hundred dollars. It kind of scares me. It kind of scares me. Now they're doing $49 year lifetime. Scary stuff. I don't know about that. Anyway, that's a side point. So I'll see what I can do. Yeah. When I see them trying to raise money different ways, it's kind of scary. So, um, phase Oh, I already said that. So let me add something. Add certificates. Add exit portfolio for uh, build it community. For example, clarity course, uh, chatbot 101 etc. What I think for chatbot 101, the exit portfolio would be you having two to three chatbots and then the URLs and something, something that's a printable, uh, something that's a clickable PDF that you can send out to potential clients. And then they can see a one pager of what you've accomplished, what kind of chatbots, and then they can click the link and then it takes them to your chatbot that you created. So it, it you know, it's interactive and they can see that it, it, you know, it's really good work for the clarity. I think it's almost showing you that you can do, um, product market fit for products and you can show like what your product and service is, or if you're working with other clients, what you can do for them and mock up either products and services or help them create their, their best case scenario. Um, okay. Two more phases and I'll stop. So phase two, Phase two, oh, excuse me, phase seven is the adopt phase. The customer takes ownership of the relationship, leading the charge on deepening and strengthening the bond. In this phase, they proudly show their support and affinity for your brand and are thrilled to be associated with your reputation. If they do feel compelled to embrace you, they will be a customer for life. You want the customer to adopt your way of operating and taking ownership stake in the relationship. So again, they're going to see the completion 
of the products or service. They love what you're doing. And uh, it's smooth sailing. I do this with exit interviews or I'm constantly trying to get feedback or understand how we can do better. Uh, I still need to do a lot better at this, but I just do exit surveys and see after they do a, you know, do a chorus or have a product, how are they feeling with it? This, you know, it's sometimes really tough to hear it. At first, I, I felt really emotional when I would let someone down or I, it wasn't at the standard, but when it came down to it, a lot of it was either the expectations weren't there at the beginning, which I didn't put in front. For example, when I was stupid and I mean, I'm still pretty stupid, but when I was really stupid and I would guarantee like, okay, if we do this, this is the projection of what kind of ads or how much money you would make or how many leads you would get with ads. And even though I'd be like, this is the range, people would focus on, clients would focus on the upper echelon of what's possible and it's just not realistic. And so you can hear me now when I'm always yelling about ads should just be seasoning. Do not put your whole business on ads because it's just not worth it. And so a lot of the client relationships and experiences, the worst client relations I have had has been around ads. And that is because I did not do the right expectations of what ads can do for your business and how long it really takes to optimize ads. So that is my bad. And I always try to tell people do not do what I did because that is, that was, those are my worst relationships because, and they all have to do with ads. So it's setting the expectations, making sure they understand what they, they're getting. And that's why I think I like productized services and courses so much because you see the clear deliverables, you know, when it's ending, you can re up and people can stay with you if they want to do another project. It's not ambiguous. I feel like ads, when you're an ads manager, I feel like you're always on the spotlight. Like you're always on trial for like, why aren't you making the, us this much money? What's going on? And I always feel like I'm justifying. That's just me and my relationship with ads. And forecasting is very different than giving your client what they want. And ads, you're forecasting constantly. You're forecasting at every quarter, every six months, every 12 months. And so um, the adoption phase, that's where I would crash and burn on because I didn't set up again all the way in the previous phases the affirm phase and really i think even the admit phase i think i i really messed up on those two phases and that's why phase seven was so bad for me um so that's why i really i think this is important so um phase eight yeah see Karima, uh you know you know, so that's why, like, I totally got out of the ads game. Like, I'll teach people how to do it for them to manage it themselves and what I'm doing. Um, but ads, it feels like it's too much of a silver bullet for me anyway. I can't do it. Um, that's just my feelings because it's it just, it's too many intangibles. And, and I just feel like no one's ever happy. Either I get you the leads you want and then you're mad how much it took me to, to do it with how much ad spend or... You don't get the results and I saved you money and you want it to go faster. And I'm like, it takes, it takes time <laughs> for ads to work. So that's just my experience. Um, phase eight advocate in the advocate phase, the customer becomes a raving fan, zealous promoter and eager referral engine all in one. In this phase, they de develop into a, a, a uh, built in unpaid uncommissioned marketing representative singing your praises far and wide to other potential customers who might benefit from your product and service. Nyota, I think you're there. I get people all the time uh, messaging me. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> and if you don't persuade them to promote you by making it worth their while, they will likely continue as a customer, but they will help you grow your business, but they will never help you grow your business. If you're if you don't persuade them to promote. That's interesting. So that's just giving people the power to promote. So I understand what he means by you don't wanna have affiliates right off the bat all the time. I'm a big fan of affiliates. And um, I mean, I don't think that's everything, but I still think affiliates work very well. And um, also too, we're gonna to be having an affiliate program. Uh, Karima, you already know about that. 
if anyone else wants to be a part of affiliate program or you think someone would benefit to be part of the Build It community, uh, let me know. And of course, we're going to be having affiliate programs as well uh, for you to get. I think it's going to be 20% or 25% of all of all the, uh, their membership continually. So let me know if you're interested and uh, I'll get you more information on that. So again, these are the eight phases. And as you're building out what you're trying to do in your business, you should be working on these phases every single step of the way. Um, so that's kind of what we're working on. So again, for our adoption phase, relationship, I think that's kind of like the completion of the completion of Let's say completion, completion of task, completion of project. I'll just say that. I think we can do, I think we're at eight out of 10. I think we just need to do better. I think we can do better where we're either having sending. I saw one company that they actually send pieces of cake every time they, uh, every time someone accomplishes something, like they hit a milestone they just send them cake. Um, I mean, who doesn't like cake, though? I was going to do edible arrangements or cake. Sabrina ain't about el edible arrangements. But I'm thinking maybe if we did a piece of cake. But then I got to worry about, like, in the mail. And then it, I don't know if it's going to be, like, an Amazon gift card. I think that's too generic. I think it's got to be something more personal than an Amazon gift card. Although everyone loves Amazon. I mean, I'm not... I mean, is Amazon gift card? Like if you finish something and then you got a random Amazon gift card, is that personable enough? I don't feel like it is. I think if it's something, a place that you like shopping, but who doesn't sh shop on Amazon? Anyway, I'm going around in a circle. The advocate um, section. Now that you're always out here making pe people feel comfortable out here. You got Karima to show up on YouTube. I can't even do that. So yeah, you're, yeah. You're the star of that for the advocates in phase eight. So I got to work on that. I need to do better. Um, <laughs> oh man, no, you're too much. You're too much. Um, okay. So that is what we're working on right here. Yeah, she did need to stay home. So she'll be back in a second. She she takes breaks, but I know the window is probably still open. She'll be back in a second. So that's what I'm working on right now. Now, I'm going to be also telling you about uh, the live notes, what we're planning on doing this week, what we're doing on with the studio. I know cake is better. Um, let's see. Now you get real specific. Let's see. I'm not sure how much we can afford to give this much cake, but we'll see what we can do. Um, yeah, let me know. So... Let's talk about, oh, let me know what's going on with you. What's the gross national product for you? Oh, national product. Mm-hmm. Mm, now I'm thinking about Panera. That's pretty good. You know, all right. Maybe, maybe we should have in the community, what's your favorite dessert or favorite something like that? Maybe we'll set that up when people come into the community. Then they automatically get a gift card for something like that. Like, and then we're saying like, go buy yourself a black, uh, black cookie at Panera, something like that. Is that black chocolate? Too? Let me look this up real quick. Panera bread menu. Okay. We're getting off topic. So as I'm looking up that, let me know what's going on with you in your business. If you're trying to, if you're struggling on one of these sections, Erica, you talked about it a little bit. Black cookie. Let me do this. Um, let me do that. And, uh, and then I'm going to just be talking about what we're working on with Build It and what um what we've got going on. Excuse me. Let's see. Pastries and sweets. Hmm. Hmm. 
chocolate croissant. This is, I can't beg them, so. Oh, it's that chocolate cookie with the walnuts. Okay. See, Karima, now you're bringing in wings. We'll talk about that. Okay. Now, oh, wait a minute. We got something from, uh, from Periscope. I have the hardest time getting through. I just call it that. <laughs> okay. I get, I have the hardest time getting through the gatekeepers. Okay. So let's talk about what kind of business are you in? I'm on. I think I'm saying that right. I'm on a M O N. I think that's Amon, right? Amon. No, it's Amon. It's Amon. Um, tell me what's going on with the kind of business that you're trying to, uh, get involved in or that you're in and you're trying to get past those gatekeepers. Let's talk about that. Yeah, Karima. Yeah, we got we to gotta stop that. We can't be doing wings out here. Um, it's too extreme. Too extreme. Um, so until I hear... Oh, industrial sales. Okay. So first of all, what are you doing right now? Most likely... So th this is what I'd say, right? Well, yeah, give me more. Give me more. So industrial sales... Tell me, um, what have you tried in the past? I got to get off this page. Nyota, you don't even care about business anymore. Cheese Brittany. Mmm, though. A freshly baked flaky butter pastry. Stuffed with top. Mmm, cream cheese. Okay. All right. All right. I'm off this page. I'm leaving. This is too much. Go build something and I'll send you a gift card for it. And then maybe we should start doing food reviews. Um, let's see. Yeah. I'm on. Th this is what I would do. If I'm trying to get through gatekeepers, this is what I would work on. Okay. First of all, I need to know where are the gatekeepers? I need to know what they, they look like. Is it the assistant? Is it the secretary that you're calling and you're trying to get to this business? What is it looking like, right? The second part is how can you, why, why should they talk to you? What makes you special? What makes your idea or what you're doing different? You've got to be thinking about that. Now, the reason you're going to be thinking about why should they talk to you? You need to already have a line or you need to understand your value prop. And before you even talk to the gatekeeper, you need to understand how are you going to come across as the authority and why they need your help. Now, most of the time, if you're already presenting or you're going to be in front of the business um owner or the ones that make the decisions, the COO or C, ex C executive, someone that's on, you know, in the C-suite and that specific department, why should they want to talk to you? Then you go from there. For example, if I'm trying to um, have a product and service that affects their business and I'm going to be saving them money or I'm going to do something where if I give them education and help every employee the productivity will go up or they're going to save lots of money. Okay. I'm going to go more towards human resources, something like that, or the CFO because I'm incentivizing them via money. And so I'm going to be in getting ahead. If I'm, if I've got the gatekeeper, I'm never going to be heard. Right? So where does the decision makers hang out? Who do they listen to? Where are those groups where they're going to listen to you and you get past the gatekeepers? Okay, so for example, what, what, what we do, and this is part of the live streaming course, is uh, you're trying to show up where you have a command and authority, and that way they're going to seek you out. You're not going to constantly be trying to battle and get through the gatekeepers, right? So if you're looking for very specific communities, and by the way, you have to be good at whatever you're doing, or you have a very unique style or your solution is very specific, You've got to focus on how you can get in front of the right people. And for the most part, it's you doing presentations. It's you doing a very specific type of content that 
benefits your target audience. And that's how you get past the gatekeepers. Um, I don't be up here after my virtual writing retreat. No, no, you know what? I'm usually not here. Wait a minute. Am I, am I, Nyota, am I normally here on Sundays? Wait a minute. Now that I'm reading your, your messages out of order, man, I used to repurpose my old podcast. Yeah. You need to do that. Um, I didn't know you had podcasts from 2018. I think you're asking if I'm normally here on Sundays. Um, not usually, but like I was telling Karima, I might be here more often right now, uh, just because I'm going to do a sprint of live content, but I might be doing TLDRs where I'm doing really short episodes and really specific, such as I might do a very specific, um, tech reviews and then under 15 minutes, how I would do something. Yeah. I'm usually not here on Sundays. I'm usually not here on Sundays, but um, I might do like 15 to 20 minute episodes and might start blitzing these things and, uh, and being really specific. So I think I have enough li- I think I have enough long, like long form videos, but I think I want to start doing like 15 or 20 minute episodes, like really, really focused of like, Hey, we already covered this topic, but like, if you only have 15 minutes, how would you get started? Like, no excuses. This is what you need to know. And it's almost like an overview kind of video. And then it's like, Hey, if, if you want more information, here's one of our past episodes that goes deep in this subject, let us know what you're working on. And so it's a really more like punchy, really quick, quick, quick kind of thing. So I'm working on that. It's a little bit different because then the shows won't be me doing one tool, three businesses. It's just very specific, but I think it might work. I don't know yet. So I'm, I'm thinking about like, yeah. So if, if people, if you like that idea, if people like that, I might just, you know, start doing that as a live show, uh, once a day for like 15 minutes at night at like, you know, six or seven, something like that. So I might try to do something like that. That's the plan. I'm on. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? What I'm saying? You know what? Let me just show you, right? This is what I'm thinking, right? So you're, you're telling me you're in industrial sales. Um, let's just, let me go on like LinkedIn real quick. Okay. So if I was really trying to do this, okay. Let me just show you the three things that I would do. Okay. I'm going to have three tools up right now. If I'm trying to get past the gatekeeper, this is what I got. Okay. Number one, really simple. I would start targeting who your target audience is. If they're on LinkedIn, start looking who they are, where they work and everything like that. I would do that just so I can start getting a list of understanding who they are, where they're located, what kind of companies, then I would use a tool like, um, Synovio and I would get the Chrome extension, look their website and then look up all of the C level executives from their website and then email them. Then I would probably create a lookalike audience or the industry leaders all with C level, like CEO, COO, CFO, whatever CTOs. And then I would go on, find that lead and make myself a list. And then I would probably create a email campaign to target them about what you're trying to solve. But like, you've got to be super, super focused on how you can help. Like, so for, for example, like my whole thing was, I used to be hey, I'm going to teach you how to create your signature product. Okay. That's great but we need to be more specific. How do you create your signature product or service using live streaming? Now, most times with the build a community, you'll see me just using haphazard. I'm doing like all across these things. But if I'm going to position myself with companies, my whole pitch is I can help them do it with live streaming. And so I'm being super specific. And then if I want to be even more specific, 
And I'm saying I'm only targeting companies that are really positioned for growth. For example, e-commerce right now, I'm focused on helping e-commerce Shopify stores scale using live streaming. And the second one is industry leaders that are already C-level executives that are trying to build out their personal brand. That's how I'm going to teach them how to build their personal brand using live streaming. So I've, I've identified very laser type focused uh, industries and people that I'm working with. And then we go from there. Right now, do I work with other types? Yes, but now when I go for very specific companies or types of clients, those are all the things that I'm doing. Okay, I'll check it. You know, I usually have my Discord off, Karima, so I'll, I'll, I'll turn it back on. Um, okay, so does that make sense? Let me know. Amon, hopefully you're still watching this. Hopefully you're still watching this. Um, but if anyone else, does that make sense uh, about trying to get past gatekeepers? As you can tell, I need to do more on LinkedIn. People hit me up. Nike's cutting jobs. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so again, hyper specific. Good night. Good night, Grima. I'll talk to you later. Have a great night. Um, don't be excited about the podcast. I like it. <laughs> Everyone loves lounge talkers, so nothing wrong with that. Um, so that's how I would get past the gatekeeper. Highly specific going from there. And, and also too, I would just like to point out. So let's see. I'm going to show you if people are like, oh, doc, like you're just saying these things, these really don't matter. I'm going to show you when I normally post and I do, you know, and talk and do all this stuff. Sometimes people listen, but a lot of times they don't. I'm going to show you using when you have a technique and specifically live stream, I keep bringing this up, how you can position yourself. This is after doing one live stream for a group, if anyone's heard of the hustle.co or trends.co, some of you might be watching from that, maybe you're here from that. You have to understand the positioning of how you're going to be bringing values to others. And uh, I'm gonna show you this real quick. And this is from an organic post. I'm not posting this. Hold on one second. Could we go any slower? Thank you so much. Okay, let's take a look at this. Let me move this. Yeah, Erica, you're crushing it with LinkedIn. That's how you got all, you're talking about all the artists, right? Let me move some stuff. I got way too much stuff, way too much stuff. Oh my goodness. This, okay. So if you look at this, right, this is one of the content editors from trends when we were seeing if build with me for their community would be a good thing. Right? So when they mentioned it, this is him talking. I didn't say that. And this is what I'm talking about. The power of referral and the halo effect of what's going on. So he wrote doc Williams has been killing it lately. Have you guys been watching every night? He builds three businesses on YouTube. Last night he did a case study on Dropbox showing how they grew up 4,000%. I'm going to cut out to the end. It says, tell us in the comments or like this post and we'll let you know if there's enough interest. And this is saying if we're going to create an exclusive show, for their community. They have 6,000. They're all entrepreneurs. They're all very specific building their personal brand or a, a large majority. So it's my target demographic, right? From that one post, 290 likes, 105 comments. Okay. All because some of them saw my first live stream. I talked to them, sent them a video, and then I talked to Brad and I was like, hey, can you put up this poll? It would be great. I would love to come back. 
I'd love to do this monthly. And this allows me to have more leads, more of my target demographic, more a very specific kind of group, 105 comments, 290. So again, this, this, I'm not saying I'm not special at all. Everyone can do this, but it's understanding what's happening. Now, if I was going to cold call or pitch all of these businesses, it'd be a totally different relationship. The content editor of the group and of the newsletter that is focused on entrepreneurs is writing this post about me. So it goes back to getting past the gatekeepers. What are you going to do? How can you stand out? What's your main hook that people appreciate what you're doing? Nope. Oh, it, it's, it's just the, the way to help people. It, that's the only part that's special. Everyone can do this. Everyone can do this, but thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, by the way, we hit over a hundred comments tonight as well. So now restream just asked me or said, congratulations. And it's all because of live streaming. Yeah. Yep. Just received a hundred messages. I'm going to tweet that. And I think we're in the top 10 percentile for our restream the last couple of months, just engagement and everything like that uh, for the platform. So again, when we're talking about this, it's all goes back to live streaming. It all goes back into understanding the clarity of your value prop, your product, your service, and then positioning and getting in front. And by the way, just so people know this and Karima knows this, well, Karima's sleeping now, but, um, everything that I taught about live streaming, I used to teach it to streamers and it never converted as high because it's a totally different mentality. It's a totally different everything. There's so many reasons why it didn't convert, but sometimes you have the right product and service. It's just in front of the wrong audience. And so really starting these things, you know, I, I knew this was possible. I knew this was going to be a really big, um, deal to help because streamers do it automatically. Just a lot of streamers on Twitch are not business minded, so they don't take it serious, but they have all the intangibles. In fact, most streamers would be making six to 10 times more than they make if they focused on business. But again, it, it, they're just, a lot of streamers don't take it serious or they just want to get contracts and be more like the talent and don't have to think about business and don't want to build their own brand. They just want to be under a label which I get, but they're leaving a lot on the table. So again, it's about positioning and what you want to do. Nota, so I've been doing these, oh, morning walk and talks in the morning and being adaptable since the 1st of June. My goal is to monetize it the way, the most ways I can't. Okay, so tell me about this. Now, who you've been having on the show? Is this on Facebook, by the way, Nyota? No, no, let's see. Okay, just you. Okay, so the question is, after you've been making these videos, first of all, what kind of subjects are they? Whatever subjects they are, have you been taking the time to then sending them to people that need to benefit from them? That's good. Hey, listen, get your exercise, start doing content too. Okay. A tip of being more adaptable. Is it uh, general being adaptable or is it a very specific target audience that needs to be adaptable?
Okay, so this is what I would do. If you're already creating content, I would really be focused on after you create content to give it or send it to people that need to benefit from it and get them to have responses. So when I'm, when I'm creating certain content, anything from drinking water to being more, uh, being your own advocate. Okay. So because there's so many, there's a range of topics that means you're going to be kind of seeing what works at this stage. So if it's drinking water, who are the five people that need to drink water and what's the benefits of them drinking more water, send them the video or the link or tag them in the video and say, I'm thinking about you. I think this would really help you. Um, being your own advocate. Okay. Who is that for? Why would they, why does it, why do they need to hear it that day? Are they depressed? Are they feeling it? What's going on here? Okay, great. Great, 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 great. All right, so that's what I would start with. Because if you're going to be, if you're already going to be out there and you're trying to find your right target demographic, th this is the other thing with live streaming, which sometimes it feels like you're just yelling into the air sometimes, like no one's listening, but it's important to know you've got to start basically all about being your own marketing. Yeah. 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 First of all, I'd be like, okay, so if <laughs> that is a great picture of me, by the way, <laughs> I love that picture. Yeah. So what I would do is make sure that you're taking that content and you're, you're hand delivering it. And what I mean by that is you're tagging the right people that need to be impacted by that and then making the correlation. So like me, when I read, when I just read that you were talking about drinking more water and then it's like, uh, basically all about being your own marketing. I don't understand that. Now, is that about maybe I've got to be hydrated to make sure I'm taking care of my body so I can do my own marketing so I can have the right energy to be the my mind frame. So I'm just, if I'm thinking about that and I, I haven't watched the video, so I'm just imagining that, but you need to already write a small explanation of when you send that video to someone why does it benefit them? You're going to have to be, make it laser focused for people to continually understand where you're coming from and for them to invest and be like, okay, she's talking about, okay, let me, let me watch this. Let me see why this is important for me. Um, the other thing is too, I would really take note, and this is in the new clarity course, by the way, shout out to the new clarity course, but this is really, you should stock in if they respond to certain things, if they're responding to um, more mindset. If they're thinking about more like, you know, basic things, basic health about keeping their body set versus them, the mindset of being adaptable, like what, what's working? Do they just need tips to take care of their body and themselves? Do they need to be opening their mind and really meditating? You need to see what's working as you're sending them content. Okay, went on my <laughs> my uh, desert business page. Okay, okay, that's not a problem. So what's been the response? Have you been getting a response? Has it been crickets? What kind of response have you been getting? Because now you've been doing it on your personal page and now you're bringing it over to business page. What's going on? I'm thinking about doing something, by the way, this is random as Naoto is about to answer. I might do the 15 minute like power hour. I might make it like really 80s or 90s. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking about, you know, like the spandex and like do a trailer of like the power hour or something like it's workout and it's a trailer and then it's me just giving business tips and it's around the lunch hour really quick. I'm live and then I'm out. I'm thinking about something like that. Okay. So you're getting a good, you're getting a good response. Okay. You're so motivating. Okay. This is so nice. Okay. This is, you're on the right track, but this is praise, not necessarily that they're taking it and using it. So the next question is while you're doing the video, are you giving them, uh, 
<laughs> um, so, <laughs> so when you're doing all this stuff, um, let me ask you this. Are you giving them something to do at the end of the video? You're saying, Hey, I'm talking about this subject. Are you challenging your audience to take action? Just like now, I, I was talking about the power hour for business crickets in the chat. I'm not sure if people are really trying to feel that. I might try it, but it doesn't sound like I tell them to do something. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're telling them to do something, but they're not doing it yet. Okay, so a couple things. Number one, um, I would I would probably comment directly back to the people that are saying like this is so great. Now, if it's a lot of family, you know, family's going to be supportive, which is great. But you've really got to separate it. Okay, is this family that's really going to support you and want to do this monetarily, or are they kind of just being your cheerleaders and uh, and just making sure that they're helping you? I'm just getting to the part where there is a call to action. Okay, cool. It can be a call to action for them to click or do something, message you back. It might be a challenge or, you know, if you're giving them a technique or something to do to help their life, just see if they're going to do it. <laughs> Every family is different. Yeah, so if they... <laughs> oh, goodness. So if it's friends that's responding, all of those things, see what happens. Uh, give some responses, see what happens. And um, what you're trying to do is separate. Have you ever had someone like you, you give them an idea and you're like, you know what? I'm going to start. You know what? I love SpaceX. I'm going to start my own space company. And someone they're like, good for you, baby. You know, and some people are very supportive, family, friends, whatever. And then you're like, would you like to invest in my space company? Me going to the moon. That's a very different ask. So I'm, I'm big on asking, will you support my mission to go to Mars? Would you pay me? And if they say no, well, there you go. Uh, similar to uh, now, of course, you're not doing all these things. You're not going to Mars, I don't think. But you, you still got to test the same things. One of my friends said I was already getting my miles, so I should train for walking in Spain. One of my friends walk with me. So I started today. Walk with me. I like that. I like that. Now that, that might be an initiative that might work. Walk with me. And then it could help them just gain clarity of walking and getting healthy and really think about themselves. That's interesting. It's already getting my miles. So now how much, how much are you walking, by the way? Oh, interesting. A paid walking adaptability challenge. Hmm. It's interesting. Interesting. So how would it work? You would invite other people to walk and then it's a challenge where they're donating to a charity or what, what, what are you thinking? I like the walk with me. By the way, they were talking about like the increase of what's happening with, uh, with isolation and everything with COVID that anything with me is really working. You walk, man, I thought I was killing it. I'm doing like, I just started with two miles. I thought I was doing good. I'm not doing anything. I'm not even going to tell you how many steps my wife was originally taking at the beginning of, of the pandemic. I was like, that's why you need to get outside. So now she's walking a couple of miles, but like no joke uh, because I'm trying to walk a couple of miles. Like I told her, like she was trying to make excuses because the gym was closed and, um, like for the first week of like the pandemic when she was inside, no joke. I think her Fitbit said like um, she walked 70 feet one day. I was like, how is it? I mean, we have a small house, but it ain't that small. 
I'm like, this is out of control. And yes, I'm telling that story. She knows. But now she she's had a come to Jesus moment. She's uh she's living better. Um well thank you. I'm trying, but yeah, you're doing four to four and eight miles daily. <sighs> Shoot. I need to get a bike. Mm. Walk sixty five pounds of stuff on her back. So yeah, well, yeah, that's true. This is nothing for you. This is nothing. Okay. Well, I'm, I, you know what? Why not? I would try. Um, why not do a walk with me? Mm. Killing it. Yeah. So, I mean, I like that. The walk with me thing. I, I really do. Um, you know, I would also have it. You can bring awareness to being adaptable while you're doing it. I wouldn't keep in mind too. make it short, right? The adaptability um, the adaptability challenge, do it one time. You know what I'm saying? Do it one time where you're making it a challenge. You're doing it a one-off and give yourself a week of, you know, ramp time and then just stream yourself doing that kind of, you know, walking. Maybe, maybe you'll walk your, excuse me, maybe you'll walk for four miles and stream the whole thing. I think Noah Kagan, what did Noah do? He did like a hundred thousand steps in a day, he did something. But he was streaming for like an hours or something. Uh, I know he started at noon and then I, I knew he kept doing it. Like when I tuned in, it was like 10 hours later. I don't know how many steps he did, but it was a lot. So I think if you were going to do something like that, Nyota, you know, ask other people, hey, and remember, get a bare minimum. Don't just do it and say like, you know, I'll do it whenever this week. I would say have a goal. Say I want eight people to join walk with me and you can pick your pace like pick you're going to do a mile with me and we're all going to start or do something like that. Um, yeah, do that. Oh yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. How many steps did he do? Fifty thousand steps. Yeah. Good for him. G good for him. I don't know if my hips can do that. Mm -mm. No, nope. there's better people than me. Mm -hmm. 50,000, not me. So yeah, I would probably do that. Now to, I would do something where you're doing a challenge, maybe four, or eight miles, ask people to commit. I would do a landing page and say, Hey, what's the point of the challenge? And then you say, okay, let's do it. We're going to do this in the next week. And the reason you might say, you know, and during the walk, you're going to say, this is to help you get through challenges. You've made a commitment, right? You signed up to do this. You're trying. And now you're going to walk with them. I think that's perfect. And then as you're going through it, you're telling them why they're actually doing this. 1 thing at a time, make it super super easy. So, giving them a training plan as a free download, only if it's easy for you to do. I now you can get that done like next week. If it's Sunday, I want this done. I want you to be talking about this by Wednesday. Next week, get it done. See what happens. You already been walking. You've already been doing that for almost a month. Just let them know that you're, you're planning a walk with me thing. So that's, so me and Noah, I went to Noah's bike race. What was it? It was like two years ago. I've been on, I've been two years with Noah for his charity. The first year I, I, I did the bike racing. I almost killed myself. That was the first time I'd ever ridden a mountain bike. Like when you like lock into the bike and we were riding in downtown Austin. I've never been so small, you know, n scared. I felt small because I thought I was going to die by those trucks. Whew. Started talking about the challenge today. Yeah. Right now I'm only, only talk for like seven, five to seven minutes. Okay. 
so I would, I would, you know, stream the whole thing. If you're going to do four miles, five miles, eight miles, whatever, again, it's encouraging. You're saying you're going through it and it can just really be anything you're talking about. But I think I, I really like the idea as if you can stay on stream the entire time you're telling everyone as they're getting ready to sign up. Hey, um, you know, I'm going to do this challenge. I use repurpose to put one of my videos. Oh, I love that. Hanny's somewhere in Canada. Hanny is smiling right now. Um, that's awesome. So you use that to repurpose to put on IGTV. By the way, did you um? How did you like the 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 blueprint chorus, the one that me and Hanny put together? Was it helpful? Um. So what I would do is, yeah, I would probably do a challenge. Let them know. And what I would start is if people are watching your live stream, let them know like you're doing this to help them to break through barriers. They should commit and actually just commit to a half a mile, 500 feet, whatever. But it's helping them make a commitment and get through that. <laughs> um, that's true. Good times. Good times. I know. That's, listen, I think that was some of our best. Shoo. Shoo. Um, let me think about this. How can you do this content where... Mm, hmm. I'm trying to think about how you can live stream you walking. Yeah, that my shoulders can't take... I wonder if you can wear... Let's see if you can... See why how to live stream while walking. What did Noah do when he was walking? Did he have it on his machine or something? Live streaming everything you need. Now I just need like a like a harness or something. How are you gonna do this? Live streaming Ugh, harness. How am I able to shut the video? Run through it. Oh, he had a walking brief, a uh, walking desk. See, look, I'm reading two lines, and now I'm just run it through bounce cast, and I'm gonna. Run it through bounce cast. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I'm gonna have to hold on. I'm screenshotting that now. So that's how you did it. Ran the video, strip the video, run it through bounce cast. Okay, I'm adding that in the live notes. All right. So what what do people do to stream when they're running or walking? I want my Under Armour walking app to sponsor me. You know what? See, you're going from one event and now you want Under Armour. Man. Um. What is the Alexa brief? You, you mean is it an API for Alexa? But for IG, it's, let me look at this. I wonder how you could do this. Oh, wait a minute. 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 What if you just have an overlay of the challenge? <laughs> like, like Turner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if you do the, yeah, what was, um, Daniel's asking, what was the Alexa question? Yep. This is what I'm thinking. What about this, um, Nyota? What about, what if we did this? What if you did an overlay video where it's just you saying walk with me, you know, 
four miles, whatever. It's an overlay, so they don't see you. It's an overlay, and then you're just having it attached to you, and then you're just talking. And so it's more of a podcast, but it, you're live streaming it like that. What would you think about that? Exactly, like a mini podcast. Daniel, hopefully it will get the same about Alexa. I got to look at this thing for a second. First of all, I'm adding this. Where was this? Hanny's going to love this. I'm just going to look it up. What is this Alexa brief? Hold on. Alexa's brief mode? <laughs> so open the Alexa app. Oh, so it's a certain. Oh, how to turn it on, how it works. Interesting. Listen, then you know what, Nyota? You got to just have that phone on and facing you the whole time. I don't know what you want me to say. Or you can be live for like four or five minutes as you're walking and then you're going to switch it up. I don't know what to say. Or you could just have the live stream. It depends. I got to think about that. How to turn it on and off. Interesting. Oh, once enabled. I see what it is. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I get it. Okay. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that was like a brief. I tell you the truth. I use Google Assist. I don't use Amazon. Uh, Amazon. I got you now. I got you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of which, there's a whole other issue about this. Anyway, if you were going to do, you can do a whole section of just other kind of podcast. It's like a baby. It's like a little baby podcast. Yes, 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 yes. So when we were at Vayner last year, we were talking about that. I didn't know that was the name of it. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. There's, um, a whole other series. There's a couple, um, oh, mine is called a moment in transition. I like that. The, yes, we were talking about this. I didn't know this was called an Alexa brief mode. Okay. Now we're on the same page. Now we gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. Daniel, that's what she's talking about. Okay. So I gotta think about this. Well, you know what? Now that we're making too much of a big deal about this. This is what you're going to do. You're going to announce it and you're going to say that you're going to be doing this challenge and ask them how do they want to, you know, stay in contact with that. Um, can, if you're walking, can you do, you know what I'm saying? Like Noah's talked about that. Erica, where are you at? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Like, what is that running company where you can set up? Like you can put, um, you can show people how much you walked or something and then challenge your people to do that. Isn't that on an app or something? You know what I'm talking about. I'm not crazy. I mean, I'm yes, but hold on. Um, Noah Egan presents. Yep. Just say that you're going to do the walk with me and say, how would you want to be motivated? Like, do you want, do you want to do something where, you're going to be tracked. What's going on with this? Because I mean, look, look how much time we just spent. Just ask your audience. And, and remember, you're going for a minimum. Stravia, there we go. You got it. Stravia, it always reminds me of that fake sugar thing. Streak. Streak. 
Thank you, guys. I'm trying to. Yep. I got everyone out. Everyone out of the woodworks talking about this. Moss. Thank you so much. Stray. Straw. Strava. Strava. <laughs> Thank you. See, I'm not even joking. See, this is why people have to <laughs> say this in the in the chat, like phonetically, so I can actually read this stuff. Strava. Thank you. Yeah, just ask them whatever you're going to be using. Moss, we got streak talking about there. Whatever you want to use, you know, ask them. See what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask them whatever they want to use um, to keep track. And then they can, you know, um, get that, um, you know, whatever you're using at the same time or encourage them so then they can start, um, you know, tracking and doing all of those other things. I think that would be perfect. So what do you think about that, Nyota? You do that, you have that. Your minimum goal is, I would say minimum three, but my target would be five people accepting your challenge. And then have multiple tiers, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, what will, what will be the challenge? What's the minimum for the challenge? Blah, blah, blah. So minimum amount of people you want in the, in the, in the movement and how far are they going to walk, right? Good times. Thanks, everybody. Strava. Daniel did again. I was just like, Strava? Oh, man. What did I butcher? I butchered someone's. Someone in the chat the other day was Mateo. Butchered his name. My sister called me. It was like, bro, you need to get it together. Yep, three to five people. So, Mateo, if you're watching, again, I'm sorry, man. I got it together though. You know, it's serious. My sister never comments on any of my streams. She called me right after and she's like, you need to get it together. Um, yeah. See, this is what we do around here. Thank you, everyone. This has been awesome. Man, everyone's been here. I wonder how to say Naya, Naya Moss from Periscope. Thank you so much. Talking about streak. This was awesome. Okay, so this has been great. This is why I love this show. This is why I love this community. Everyone's just trying to help each other. Um, so I'm thinking about doing the power hour. I heard no comments if anyone liked that at all, but I'm going to try it out. Mainly because I found a, a YouTube video where it's um, like old videos that are in public. What do you call it? Um, the public domain or something. Basically, I can take it. Nice. Yes, I got it. All right. Well, thank you for watching from uh, from Periscope. First of all, I've never seen you here. So thank you so much. If you'd like to come back, come back. Uh, we're always, you know, here on YouTube, on Periscope. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know how we can help. Let's see. Commit only. Yeah. Nyota. Yeah. Whole hour. Eh, it's up to you. Maybe a half hour. Um, but don't have them pay money right now. Just just try to get them to commit. And then after they do it, um, then charge them. Oh, that freaked me out. I was like, what in the world's going on here? It's my my feed watching Noah's. That was weird. Um, what was that thing? It was VHS tapes or something? VHS. Hmm, can't find it. But um, it's a whole channel that allows you to use old oh man it's old videos but the, it's from the archives uh, i can't find it anyway so you're going to be seeing some old workout i found one with bruce jenner like 92 you just wait just give me give me some time i'm gonna work on that so okay oh <laughs> yeah when i meant sometimes i walk for more Two or more hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Am I going to do an hour? No. For the new show, I think it's just going to be called Power Hour. Maybe I should call it Power 15 Minutes. I don't know. It's only going to be a... Maybe I should just call it Power Half Hour. Oh! <laughs> Welcome! Man, I'm awesome. Man. Coldest podcast. 
Listen. Well, thanks for following along. Listen. This one, like, look, there's so many different names. Thanks so much, man. And thank you for being here. Really do appreciate it. Um, all my Periscope peeps, all the no code people on Twitter. I appreciate this. Um, let's see. We had that one. Could we have that done? I think we're almost done. I cannot find that. That's going to bother me so much. Yeah, the, the show weekdays might be, I don't know, 15 minutes, something like that. It's not going to be a very long time. I cannot find this stupid thing. It It's going to drive me insane. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. Give me 20 seconds. If I can't find it, I'll never bring it up again. Let's see. Found it. The Vista Group. Okay, so the Vista Group, all they do is go to um, like Goodwills and others and they find really obscure VHS um, tapes and other things like they, the 90s and Y2K commercials. And then they just stream it nonstop for like 24-hour live streams of 90s and Y2K TV commercials. So they put up all of these different things live for you to just use for content. So I have one from old workout tapes. I've got one from Bill Gates releasing Windows 95. So I'm working on that. Anyway. Yeah, maybe I should no, more like the power quarter hour. Maybe we should just call it that. The power quarter hour. I like that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Okay, cool. All right, we got that. So in review, if anyone wants to see this, I'm going to drop it in the notes. This is in the um, the case study. Never lose a customer again. Let me just drop it in the chat. Okay, it should be on all of the platforms now. Except Facebook. I don't know why it didn't render over there. It's interesting. What? It didn't go to Facebook? Come on now. Okay, but everyone else, if you're watching on Mixer or Periscope, YouTube or Twitter, maybe I should be on Daily Motion too. That will throw everyone off. Um, there you go. So that's going to be the case study. You'll see me adding all of that kind of stuff. All those kind of good stuff will be there. Yeah, this was great. This was really good. Again, thank you so much for everyone being here and contributing and helping um yeah erica how do, do you sleep i don't know what's going on with that you're always on this show um so again thank you so much now for this week what do we got planned for it remember if you're in the build it community you already know i'm gonna have some stuff coming out uh you already have the new clarity course that's going to be dropping uh july 1st july 1st that is going to be this coming wednesday so a couple days from now um, this is a special show. It's going to be at noon Eastern standard time. We're going to have the King Sumo special edition episode. So we got Sam. She runs all of the, um, all of the customer service and working with that team. So that's going to be on King Sumo on Wednesday. We're going to do a contest from scratch. Remember from the builder community, if you send in your questions for me, I will try to, well, you guys have exclusivity when it comes to all of the questions for King Sumo and when we do stuff like that. So if you're trying to run a very specific type of, um, you know, type of contest or some kind of viral giveaway and you need help, let me know because that's going to be on July 1st. Oh, what? Tony Robbins has uh, something called the power hour in the world. <laughs> Sleep until I wake up. Um, again, Thank you so much. This community has been amazing. Uh, everyone that's watching on YouTube, your YouTube family, you guys are crazy. Uh, Periscope, everyone, it's been good stuff. So again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back later this week. Watch out for the Power Quarter Hour <laughs> that will be premiering either this week or next week. And it will just kind of be like 15 minutes, just uh, rants and what's going on from there. And uh, remember, uh, if you need anything, just message me. Message me in this video 
or also uh, ch- uh, message me on Twitter as well. I'm always on Twitter. All right, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you for everything and for your support. And uh, I will talk to you on Wednesday of this week. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great night.